What is up? Kevin Hale here doing a round of shots on the Sunday night, September 10th, 2023. Hope everyone is doing well. Had a good weekend as we wind down the weekend. Uh, round of shots here streaming on our X. You call it X now, right? Not Twitter. It's X and YouTube channels. Lots of uh, Kentucky football uh, to talk about. Well, maybe not a lot, but that would be the hot topic. And we'll be nice. We're going to be nice because we have uh, our therapist here to show us how things should work out when it comes to BBN and their emotions and their feelings and uh, all that good stuff with a, a game that arguably first half was this, was very frustrating. Uh, but we're going to get through this. Joining us, check us up. I've got Terry Brown, Kerry Lewis in the news, Jay Hayes, and back Michelle Brown. Good to see everybody. <laughs> Lee, Lee. <laughs> Michelle, it's especially good to see you. It's been a while. So the takeaway is, Kevin, when it comes to Kentucky athletics, you need more Brown to have more success. There you go. I, you know, how, how do you argue that? Um, and, you know, we got two. We got uh, Carrie. You know, today is a special day for us, you know, you and I, as uh, our history, our passion with over, my over your right shoulder, shoulder yeah. right shoulder, not your left. What's on your, over your left? It's a left. Oh, okay. Yeah, here you go. That's it. There you go. Yeah. yeah. You we'll go. share what we're talking about when it comes to the X-Files. Um, it was good to see everyone. Uh, hope everyone's doing well. Let's get at it. Eastern Kentucky rolled into town, into Lexington, Kroger Field yesterday. Uh, I don't know what the spread was. Uh, I'm sure it was, I don't know, you know, big. 20, it had to be at least 20-something. Terry, you and me, you and Carrie were in a group text group chat and i was i have to be honest i was kind of losing my mind not like breaking things or anything but it was it was a very frustrating first half um did not go uh things didn't start off is i don't know, i think i'll be speaking for more than me for a lot of bbn the the slow start the uh dropped balls the penalties we're going to talk through this. Uh, Terry, <laughs> you get the ball. <laughs> we're going to. Terry, you always start us off because you're full of sunshine. You are, you know. It, it, it's therapy. pretty simple. I, I've, I put a little something together to help us. When your team plays a sports ball game, the object of the game is that your team scores more points than the other team, right? So when it comes to Kentucky, and I say – did UK win? Did they score more points than their opponents? You should feel happy that your team won. Happy. Did your team score more points or fewer points? Then you feel sad. <laughs> happy is when you win. Sad is when you lose. So, so Dr. Brown is going to turn our frowns. Upside My down. thing is, did your team win a sports ball contest? Yes. So you should feel happy. <laughs> At the end of the game, in all fairness, sir, I think a lot of people, I think the people who were bitching and moaning during the first half, first, yeah, first half, you know, not as many were complaining, um, you know, at the end of the game when it was all zeros in the fourth quarter. You're right. It's a win. But it did not. It was not pretty. And it's a game that you you could have – it should have been pretty. Right? Am I wrong? Mm -hmm. Comparison's a thief of joy. I mean, woulda, shoulda, coulda. If I was three inches taller, then maybe I'm playing in Rupp Arena. I mean, we can do that to anything. But did your team win? Do I need the flow chart again? <laughs> but – in, in fairness, are there lessons that can be learned? Absolutely. 
every endeavor, boys and girls, is a learning experience. You can learn things when your team wins or you can learn them when they lose. I prefer to learn lessons when my team wins. What was uh, – well, let me let me bring in some other – Carrie, I'll let you go. What was were you there? You were there at the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What was your there. feeling? You know, watching it right there. I mean, the 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 fans, the stadium to me was a little def, deflated in the first half. At least it came across to me, but yeah, what's the, I, it was it was a sellout, so that was that was pretty impressive. Um, so I think let's let's go way back to the spring on this show. Let's go way back to the spring. Remember had two who had two thumbs when everybody's oh Liam Combs, the savior, he's the savior, he's the savior. Who had two thumbs and said, Hey y'all, let's slow to roll lightning in a bottle once. I don't know if we can catch it twice. I'm just saying, who had two thumbs and said that? Again, that's not to say that this team can't go, you know, can't get it appreciably better. But also, I would personally, and not because they pay me what they do. Um, would like to give some credit to EKU, who actually does have a fairly good football team. They've taken advantage of the portal. Um, they have some good players that they got through the portal. Half their coaching staff played at UK. Oh, um, you know, they've actually got a fairly decent team. Yes, they are still FCS. That's a whole situation that's if you that's that they're trying to get out of. But um, you know, they're they're picked to win the A Sun this year. Uh, you know, so should we have beat them by 70? Maybe, but just because we didn't, we still won the game. So I'm on the Terry train with this. They go sports ball winning team. Okay. Jay Hayes, you up next. <laughs> give me, give me your two cents. Uh, Mark Stoop should have been wearing a hat that said shit show supervisor. Uh, that's what it was. It was a shit show. And yes, Kentucky should have beat EKU by 50 plus. Um, but a W is a W. That is a fact. So are you unhappy that it was sloppy and bad looking forward? You know, most fans are not mad because we won. Most fans are looking forward to the SEC thinking, damn, are we even going to win a game? in the sec because if you're playing like this against eku then what's to come is not going to be good so so an like eku it, team that gave up 66 the previous yeah, weekend Cincinnati. yeah mm. so I, I see both sides you know but it, it's hard to be unhappy with a w you know but uh it was definitely a shit show uh and what Kerry was talking about, I, I was one of the people also saying, uh, you know, Liam Cohen still got to prove himself. You know, there, there's only one platform that was their heads up his ass to say. So, mm. and we know who that is. That, you know, you, you mentioned Cohen. You know, Cohen, first time around, Will Love is pretty damn good, but you also have Wandale Robinson who was the end-all, be-all. I mean, yeah. a, a legend. In well, one season, became a in legend. Right. Mm -hmm. So with this roster, we have a lot more weapons because then we only had so. Wandell. Right. Um, but I will also say I saw this and talked about it in uh, 2018, Central Michigan. We were down 17 to 7 and a half. We won 10 That's games right. that year. Yeah. Okay. That's, so, no, that's that's a no. That's a great point. We probably complained about that game too, but I, but I don't want to be one of those people. Also, like I understand the complaining. That was a piss poor outing. That was a terrible product to put on the field by Mark Stoops. Now, Mich Michelle, uh, was the performance? Um, was it more about us possibly playing down? To Eastern and then Eastern just elevating their game because it is Kentucky. There is a connection with former players, coaches. The game definitely meant a lot to Eastern. Well, I knew 
as soon as they made the announcement about Coach Roy Kidd being placed in hospice this coming week. I knew then the game was going to be a whole lot tougher than we anticipated because something like that, when you've got the legend, the face of your program, you know, his death is imminent, apparently. And you take that emotion and that can do a whole lot for a whole lot of players. You've got a lot of people on EKU staff. They, they know the Mark Stoops playbook. And they know they're the underdog. They've got nothing to lose. We've got everything to lose. Uh, all of that being said, there was absolutely no excuse for the offensive line and all their penalties. There was not much of an excuse for receivers dropping passes that were right there in the bread basket. Um, Great passes. I mean, some of them were spot on. Oh, oh, yeah. And so, you know, I think I think Leary was getting too much crap. I think, actually, mm -hmm. Cohen was getting a bit too much crap, other than he hasn't got the offensive line buckled down where they know not to flinch every time you turn around. But all of that said, we did get together when we had to get it together. The defense buckled down. At, you know, and Brad White needs to be answering a few questions, too, because his defense – Totally crap the bed. I mean, let's get real. So they, yes, I'm happy because my sports ball team won. And we <laughs> play these games at the beginning of the season so that we can learn and have an opportunity to fix things in our record, not suffer. And we could have been Alabama, you know. Could have been. Saying. But Alabama did play a very good football team as well. Um, Terry, you know, she well, brings that's up that's uh, always debatable because Texas always says they're back. Well, they looked pretty good yesterday, but yeah, I get I get what you're saying though. Uh, Terry, you know, she brings up uh, Brad White. <sighs> Brad White has this bend don't break to me mentality with his defense. I just don't think, I mean, I, I think we saw that against Ball State. We saw it yesterday. I get it when you you're playing some a very solid SEC team, but I mean I, that's that was that was I was I'm with Michelle. I was very frustrated with just the way the defense played in general. Well, the bend don't break. I mean, that's how they're going to play moving forward. You don't change it up because you play a certain team. You have that philosophy. And you move forward with it. I mean, that's do – you, do you change everything up on the fly? This week we're going to blitz way more than we're going to do the rest of the season? I don't know. I'm not smart enough. Look, I just know emotions. I don't know the X's and O's when it comes to these kinds of things. Oh, sure. yeah. There's certainly things that you want to clean up. I mean, you know, people are going to misinterpret this, say I'm a sunshine pumper. I was not happy with the play in the first quarter, uh, first half. You know, there was a lot of stuff that was going on. It's like, what are we doing, Right. I think EKU was playing up. I thought Kentucky was playing down a little bit. The concentration and focus wasn't there. But when they had to get it done, they got it done. And there really wasn't a point in the second half. I'm like, they might lose this. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a step in the right direction. Because as Jay Hayes has pointed out, there's been a lot of times it's like, oh, damn, we might lose this game. So, again, I would rather, I would rather learn – of course, scoring more points than the opponent, After then learn scoring mm -hmm. fewer points than no, the opponent. Definitely agree. Now, Carrie, you, you I know you've got EKU ties, and I definitely appreciate that. Um, and they pay me, what, what you know, yeah. that's about that's, that's my tie. Okay, well, no, that's fair still. Um, <laughs> you know, so, so, some people were kind of, I don't know if I don't know if this was in part of our conversation, but I know I saw it on social media where. Uh, because of the ties with uh, former coaches, um, players, that, you know, Stoops was not going to bury EKU. That, you know, he's got his foot off the gas because of his history with, uh, you know, a lot of people, with personnel, players or coaches. Is that fair to say? Is that the mentality, you know, 
so not it, i mean i don't think it's fair to just pinpoint that game because that's just stoops his mentality all the way around he's come out and said before that he doesn't want to hang 70 on people right he doesn't want to destroy people that's his mentality it has nothing to do with him being big friends with walt wells um and i think actually walt wells would be like if you can hang 70 on us hey man do it because he's a football coach right and if if he can't coach his team up to not get 70 hung on him then that's that's his problem right but no, Stoops, Stoops has come out and said that before. It mm-hmm. had nothing to do with EKU. It's just that's how Stoops is. Okay. So, no, I'm just I'm yeah. kind of being the messenger here. What I was No, I, but I'm tell, I'm telling you, Stoops mm-hmm. has come out and said he does not like to pound people into the ground. That's just unless, his mentality. Unless they're uh the schooling. I mean, maybe down. the birds with teeth, but that's probably that's probably it. But he, I know he said that before that he just that's just not his mo. Jay, um, what, what's your take uh, with the the defense? You know, it's kind of piggyback uh, well, off the show. They only gave up ninety two yards rushing. The run defense has been great a lot, yeah. And and Terry pointed to it that that is Brad White's way of doing it. And you've heard if you watch Van uh, and his cutups, you've heard him say. Kentucky's defense is up the middle. They're going to give up those shots, uh, not deep shots. But um, so it is what it is. I think it was 219 yards passing too. So it wasn't it's, it wasn't as bad as it looked, but it, it, it was it was bad enough. I thought uh, Mark Stoops is not hanging 60 on anyone, regardless if that's his mentality or not. He's just not doing it. Um, that's just who he is. But uh, other than South Carolina, I would like to see him hang. Uh, Them and, uh, and the cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Tennessee. But, and Tennessee. I, I mean, like, it, it was it was rough to watch, but you saw as the game went on, you saw Larry get more comfortable. You saw defense making big plays. Trevin Wallace is a beast. Brett, listen, Brad White is a defensive oh. genius. Uh, so it was just one of those games that was ugly. I, I think Mark Stoops has a history with these cupcake teams of, of just uh, – it is what it is, you know. Uh, to quote Cal, uh, Cal, if you don't win, you learn, right? Even even in winning, you learn. So moving forward, I'd like to see more beast mode, you know, as a fan. Do you feel like uh, there was good progression – um, with uh, the second game versus Ball State, this game. No, I, Ball State. I thought we took a step back. You did, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, Michelle, same kind of question to you. Did we uh, move forward? I mean, Tavian Robinson had a e ball yesterday. Um, there was definitely bright spots, but yeah. yeah, what was your warm and fuzzy from yesterday, Michelle? Well, I told uh, I, mean, I sent Jay a message last night. I said the way I saw it was the the ones that the the people that really shined in the first game kind of were lackluster, and those that we didn't see much of in the first game rose to the occasion. Now, is that a matter of the people that were good in the first game? Did they? take it for granted and maybe not work as hard, didn't have the same hunger. I just want to say for our two marquee receivers, Key and, and Brown, you all have done a lot of talking, and and and, and Barry, and you, you backed it up with your cookies last week. But if you're not prepared to prepare and be ready to perform at that level every week, maybe talk just a little bit less because we don't need bulletin board material sprinkled throughout the SEC. That's all I'm saying. That's fair. That's definitely fair. Terry, um, you know, moving forward, what's the, um, what's, what's going to get you the, give you the warm fuzzies as we head into game number three, Akron coming in town, which, I have no knowledge of acting. Right, but number one, as long as at the end of it, we have more points than our opponent, I'm smiling, right? But as I have said on this show, on other shows, these first couple of games, give me a game I do not have to pay attention to in the second half, right? Like, just give me a comfortable game 
where I'm not on the edge of my seat. And the other team is thrown into the end zone with a chance to win. Don't give me that. Right. You know, I think things will pick up. You know, I, I just that's that's just my two cents. I think we get to three and oh and, you know, what have you. Carrie, um, what do you need to see moving forward next week? You'll be there, right? Yeah, and I would like to leave at halftime because uh, it's a seven thirty game, and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that that'll be that'll be good. Uh, but yeah, don't let Akron put on their turnover tire slash tires. Yes, Akron has a turnover tire. It is a tire from a car that if you get a turnover. You get to wear it, and actually, they have two of them. I think that they can put on, but yeah. So let's not let's not have Akron on the sidelines with the turnover tire. In fairness, though, uh, Jay, Akron's got to feel good about next week, don't they? <laughs> Based on what they've seen, two two films, Akron's, Akron's beatable. Doing, yeah. Uh, yeah, they probably do feel good, but they're one and one. So Kentucky needs to make a statement going into the SEC. They need to beat the brakes off of Akron, like make a statement going into the SEC. If you don't, I mean, and I'm not saying that anyone is wrong saying, you know, yeah, of course, if we have more points, we win. You, you're going into the SEC, so you, you got to look like you've gotten better. I mean, you have to. Uh, if not, you might be looking at a Kentucky team that will not win a SEC game. And then, you know, I, I just want the big platforms to keep the same energy with the football team. That's all I want. Yeah. You know, I want I want to see Fire Mark Stoops. I want to see that if he doesn't perform the way he should, if he doesn't perform for eight million dollars. Is that his payroll or is his uh that's his paycheck these days? Eight million. Yeah, he makes more than uh, cow. So keep the same that's right. that's energy. Right. Mm. Terry or no, who uh, Michelle. Michelle. You gotta go to yeah. Michelle. Yeah, the Michelle. other brown. The other brown, the brown uh, on the other bookend. Um you feeling what are you feeling? You, you... Number James one, we check. have got to clean up well. A little bit heavy on the mustard, but um, <laughs> what we need is to have far fewer penalties. That That is killing us right now. If you can play a clean game, you can compete with pretty much anybody if you can keep the penalties to a minimum. And, and that's first and foremost what they need to do. Second, uh, and as I mentioned this on Spaces the other night, I, I want to get to the point where we don't have to say – this isn't the old Kentucky football. I mean, I want that to be such a distant memory and for us to perform at such a level that it's expected. That's a cupcake. We're going to stomp them. We're going to move on, and we're going to win the games we're supposed to win. And we already know somewhere in the SEC schedule there's going to be a game we're supposed to win, and we're going to crap the bed because we do it every year. But that's kind of a Kentucky tradition. Uh, but I want to see us win the games that we're not supposed to win. And, and all of that comes down to focus and execution because we have got substantial amount of talent and I want them to be focused on the task at hand and not looking like this is not the SEC schedule yet. We don't have to be good. Yes, you do. I, I, yes, you see, do. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm not, that's, Terry. I'm not, that's I'm not going to pick on you there, Terry. You know, the, the points, more points at the end of the game, good thing. Good. But there's also a point where the eye test style points, if you're going to make an impression, you know, you can't just – you know, you can't just outscore. You've got to a team that you're supposed to beat. Down. I've got a question. Until Jay Hayes brought it up, did you remember we were down at the half to Central Michigan in 2018? Or did you remember we won 10 games in 2018? Uh, in fairness, did, I remember. I'm just, I'm just asking. No, in fairness, so, yeah. I understand we want to make a statement, yeah. but when we look back, 
did you win the games? And I think this was like, we need Corey Price on here. This is what, like the 21st straight game, the Kentucky, like. Yeah, they're third, we, they're third, like Alabama, Georgia, Kentucky. Like this is, you Long know, we, we don't lose those games anymore. I know we want to score 50, but we're to the point, we don't lose them anymore. And I'm old enough to remember when they supposed to be SEC. That's the old Kentucky. The new Kentucky is being having records equal to Georgia and Alabama. That's what I see. Right. Because, again, we start looking at the micro. Well, this game didn't look great. And, again, until five minutes ago, you couldn't have told me that they were down at the half to Central Michigan during the 10-win season. I just remember winning 10 games. But but in fairness, no, no offense, who gives a fuck about – 2018. Sorry, my language. We're right. talking right now. Let's let's stay and, in the and, moment. And, right. But th- my point is, you can look shitty against those teams, right? And you can still have a great season. We're trying to and extrapolate we- a small amount of data into a full data set, and that's the fallacy, right? right. right. Was, you, yeah, I understand was, you don't want to talk about 2018, but I can point to other nine win seasons when we didn't look great against a particular team. I right. can do that all up and down. You know, we went to the Outback Bowl, and I think we barely squeaked by somebody back in 1998. We can do this all day, you know, outside of Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, maybe Clemson. Every other team's got a game they barely squeak by. Right. That's, That's what college football analogy. is. That's just an analogy for early in the season, oh, panic, panic, and then right. win 10 games, you know. Right. That's, and that's the, what you remember is winning 10 games. You win the, you win the 10 games. Right. You focus on the end result. I but know it doesn't matter, but, but, but if it kind of does you're, matter. As you're getting to that 10 win, uh, you know, I, I, as you're getting to nine win, I guess it was nine regular season in, uh, in order to get to the bowl game. If you are impressive, if you, if you beat down, if you, if you make those nine wins matter, your ranking, granted, there's rankings don't mean shit right now, but eventually – when the playoffs or the polls come out for the you know the college football playoff rankings, if you have looked good, dom- you dominate, you win the games you're supposed to impressively. I'm 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 a, I'm gonna interject and wrap this up. If any team in the SEC gets to nine wins, no matter how they look getting there, they get in the votes. Let's be for, let's be honest. We've never seen a nine win SEC team not get any hype. Let's be honest. Okay. But you get nine wins in su- however you get nine wins. In support of wanting to look good against the lesser competition, I think that you learn by how you perform. So if you're accustomed to performing at a high level, regardless of who you're playing, that when you do play a better team, you're going to be better prepared to perform the way you need to. So you get into some sloppy habits with weaker competition. Those sloppy habits can carry on and cost you big yeah. in in the more important games. Now, I, I won't go any further without saying, hey, it looks like we got a kicking game, and that's not to be uh, dismissed lightly. So yeah. uh, I just wanted to get that little thing in. But this is why I wanted to play better in the lesser games. You Muscle memory, performance memory, you need yeah. that. The slow starts, Carrie, are have been frustrating. They're always frustrating. I mean, because that's when you you do see at halftime, you go on social media, which you know, just I'm again, I'm the messenger here. Not Same that Oakland stadium, talking. you don't. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> not not that stadium, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Good that, luck. <laughs> Good. That's fair. Same old Kentucky. Same old Kentucky. That's that's the the narrative on you know with a lot of BBN, and granted, it's. A lot of those people are feeding off the uh, three-letter mothership, to You know, when their guy starts burying the coach, you know, during the game, then, you know, the rest of his uh, sheep follow. So, minions. Minions. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Let's go, uh, yeah, Akron next weekend. They're one and one as a 7.30 game, as you said, Michelle, or uh Carrie, uh, college football weekend two takeaways. Terry, uh, the 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 sexy, you know, topic or this you know program is Colorado. 
the Sanders father son yes. uh, what they're doing. Um, I love it. I love the. Uh, I, I'm with it. I'm I'm all for it here too. So yeah, I'm all in on the Colorado trade. Even though a lot of people have just came after prime time coach prime about how he built this roster and he built it within the rules i mean it's the portal i mean Look, why, man, I mean, you you can write what you want to write but the thing is you're not making a big revelation revelation uh in 2023 when you tell me De- Deion sanders is all about self-promotion no. i've been like <laughs> i mean Deion's all about Deion. that is not breaking any kind of news mm-hmm. he's always been about Dion since he was down in Tallahassee so uh again I'm all about on the Colorado train Carrie uh the weekend takeaways for you Shannon Dawson getting it done at Miami against Texas A&M baby yeah it worked that time didn't it and you loved it um uh also James Madison you know I love me some JMU the Dukes they just got into FBS. They should have won. They won their conference last year and should have been able to go to a bowl game because, but because the NCAA is stupid, they weren't allowed to. But uh, went and beat Virginia. So yeah, I'm, I'm all I'm all in on some James Madison. Jay, what you got from the weekend? Uh, Texas. First of all, Colorado. They're smoking everything. Uh, teams, good weed. Everything. It's legal there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's great. They're Very smoking legal. everything there, and it's fucking awesome. Yes. Uh, but uh, my take was Texas is the real deal. Uh, their quarterback is amazing and smooth, smooth, man. Yes, just he is a quarterback. Alabama's quarterback is young. He's an athlete, but I'm not sure QB is the title for him yet. But he is a beast too, uh, but it, it, it was a great game. It was fun that the Texas fans at Alabama in the crowd were chanting SEC. Uh, that was great, uh, but yeah, that that was a fun game. Um, overall, the SEC is still like Kentucky. Kentucky vibes everywhere, so I didn't feel bad from looking in at that point but yeah the the sec is not playing good right now sec has uh gotten out played yeah this season notably the bigger games yeah yeah but it's just week two and they're playing cupcakes if that's the name but uh lesser teams uh so well i'm going by like lsu losing to florida state you got bam i mean there's only there's only a couple teams that played you know you know Good games, Alabama, yeah, no, LSU, that's fair, that's Florida State. But um, yeah, I, is it by design? Who knows? You know, wait. You know, the SEC is grueling, so uh, we'll see. You know, when we get into week four and five and six, you know, I think teams start to separate. Then, you know, I think you see a different Kentucky. Um, I don't think we're looking at the real product yet. You know, and it's frustrating as a fan you know, we see big blue nation bitching and complaining and all that. And I get it because it was horrible to watch, but at the same time, I don't think that we're looking at five, six, seven week product yet. So no, of course not. Of course. There's definitely, as Terry's pointed out, you, you, you want to teach correct after a, after a win, but man, Colorado, <laughs> I mean, geez. I, I got to get that smoke weed every day. I, I got to get that for them. I, I got to get it. You know, Primetime Junior, is he uh, Is he the uh, front runner right now for? Uh, no, nah, I would say the two-way player, Travis Hunter. Oh, well, you got two of them on their team. Well, nice. that, that, yeah, <laughs> that, that's my home because, you know, it's always a quarterback, you know, so I'd like to see a two-way player do it. Some of the media will lose yeah. their freaking mind if, if – uh, you know, you got a potential Heisman winner or candidate uh, out of this program. I would, love it. I would I, absolutely love it. Yeah. Michelle, uh, your takeaway from a takeaway from the weekend. Well, uh, LSU came out like they really had something to prove. I mean, they dropped 77, I think, on a, their opponent. Uh, granted, not a, a top tier opponent, but. After their first week, they needed to make some kind of a statement. 
Tennessee looked underwhelming. Like I said, we talked about all the SEC teams that looked underwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, every, every year in college football, there's one week that is just a real downer. And you'll have one week that's got a bunch of bizarre upsets. Now, we didn't have so many bizarre upsets yesterday, but it really was an underwhelming week. And it was that way for many teams in many conferences and something in the air. I don't know. Uh, that doesn't excuse our performance, but we weren't the only one is all I'm saying. It just was not, not the greatest week to tune in to college football short of the Bama Texas game and Texas. I will say they do look like they could be legit. But in the last 15 years, how many times have I heard Texas is back, Texas is back, Texas is back, and two games later, Texas is way back, back here in the standings, way back. So, so you know, I, I, I just take them. I got to – they're going to have to make me believe a little bit more than – When you go into Tuscaloosa game. and beat Alabama, you're, you're back. That's a great win. It was a very good win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't want to take away, but like you know, mm. it's it's like the NCAA tournament on any given day, any team can beat another team. Facts. They have to sustain it. So let's see. The uh, latest AP poll came out. No surprise, Georgia. Georgia. It's, <laughs> I'm reading it's in order. Georgia one, Michigan two, Florida State three, Texas four, Bama dropped to what ten. Tennessee 11. Um, Terry, one of the. What was you know, the Yahoo your, group that. Just, go ahead, sorry. If you what? don't mind. But there was no. some bizarre uh, entity that put out a power ranking list, and they still had Alabama listed at number one in their power rankings. Oh. That was the ESPN. Maybe it's somebody uh, from Colorado because, you know, they're smoking everything there. I don't know. It was the ESPN, like, uh, I forget what they call it, but the FPI or something like that. Yeah. And also, shout out to the Hawkeyes taking care of business 25. in Ames. Yeah. Uh, but Brian Friends is now six points behind where he needs to be. He's he is. losing ground. He, he, he is, and they're trying. Like, they are absolutely and trying. I mean, the defensive score technically counts, but yes. he is six points behind. Yeah. That is something to watch. I'm glad you're on board with that because it's the most Fun. bizarre thing ever. <laughs> it is so bizarre, but I, I I love it, and we're a Hawkeye household. Yeah, speaking of Hawkeyes and uh, who's at Iowa State, didn't they uh, recently have some players that got busted for gambling? Tyler uses little brother. No, nah, that's yeah. right. Mm. A, lot of, a lot of folks got caught up. I'm sure it's running wild. Every program they just ones that got busted right now there ain't much uh, else to do here i'll tell you that much <laughs> <laughs> you got to do something to live it up when the corn is ready for harvesting <laughs> yesterday um uh, during the kentucky game i forgot who the sec uh commentator was he made the spikes, spikes that's right uh, he made the uh they were talking about ray davis and he made a comment and i'm actually Quoting here, quoting his 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 comment. Nine months ago, this is Spikes talking about Ray Davis. Nine, nine months ago, when he jumped in in the portal, everybody wanted him. Eleven years ago, as a foster child, nobody really nobody wanted him. Um, which you know, which I actually did not know uh, Davis's history as being a foster, uh, being in foster care as a child. Uh, you had a lot of people coming at Spikes for the comment. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was not needed. You know, what the, does he know? Terry, it turns out that was a quote from, I don't know if that was the exact quote from Davis, but that was in an in a article that I think Daryl Bird maybe uh, yeah. had, had put out. So this is again when this is... We have now. I, I don't mean to shit on BBN, but there is a there is a a part of our fan base that are just completely fucking idiots. They jump 
right away, again, this is either them, the minions, or, or they're just not really that smart. You know, coming going at him when they didn't know. You know, do do your homework because, again, uh, this is a story that the player Davis had put out there. What was your what your take it was on that? it was inartful the way he was saying that, and you know maybe how so he's quoting the, 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 the delivery was clunky. Football, That's man. what I'm talking about. The Did delivery I, uh, in it in much. in a vacuum, yeah. you're listening like. It hits you wrong, but if you know the background, okay. Uh, I give a little bit more grace because doing shows like this and talking for an hour and a half, you're going to stumble over your work. You're going to deliver something that's clunky like that. So I offer a little bit of grace in situations like that. Mm, okay. Carrie, what, what, what about you? We Did live it? in a world of sound bites and social media. And if you think that people are actually going to go look to see where that came from, you are out of your mind. Um, you know, stupid it's it, 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 it's not that it's, it's not that people are stupid. It's just no, that me. people people just this is how we live mm. our lives. Every one soundbite at a time. Next tweet, next tweet, next tweet, next tweet, next tweet. Like, 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 like uh, quote tweet. Uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. Then you move on to the next thing. So, mm. you know, I. This is just this is just how it is. And then people are going to get angry and then it's going to come out and say, well, you took it out of context and people aren't going to care or see it. And then they've moved on to the next thing. Yeah, Jay, I, when I heard it, first heard it, I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was bad. And then when I got wind that it was actually Davis that, you know, put it out there, then I was like, well, yeah, OK. I I knew it was already out there, but when I heard it, I I was like, okay, let's talk about the football game. Like when they get off on these stories, sometimes, unless it's at the beginning of the game or the end of the game, not in the middle of the game. Uh, I I kind of drift off and like, come on now, let's you know. So that's kind of how I took it. But then afterwards, mm -hmm. when I saw everyone tweet, I'm like, it, it's already out there. I mean, like he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Uh, other than I don't want to hear that. I want to hear football, you know, because he's a football guy. Takeo Spikes is a football guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that I didn't I didn't think it was wrong. I mean, you know, I, I kind of was like, you know, back then they didn't want me. Now I'm hot. They all on me. Mike Jones, you know, <laughs> Ooh. bring it. What about you, Michelle? <clears throat> Well, I think obviously he knew it was a quote from Davis. He knew that he had an obligation. If he was going to bring that into it, he had an obligation to say, well, as Davis said himself, that was what was missing. Yes. Years yes. ago. That's fair. You yeah. know, he was calling and trying to get somebody to take him in. That's all he had to do was add that mm -hmm. one little caveat. And you don't have this, but I'm with Jay. We mm -hmm. don't need all these feel good things unless it's, you can have one of these stories at halftime. That's fine, too. But can I also lobby for the ridiculous in-game between quarter interviews with the coaches? Leave them alone. Let them coach football. They're not going to tell you anything you really need to know about the game. Just stop it already. Okay, I'm done. What they should do, Terry, you know, during the uh, quarter interviews is to have a whiteboard with them and <laughs> flow chart to the yeah. interviewer. The, you know. Yeah, but this, you know, this is what ESPN and all these places do to sports, to humanize the athletes. We get trauma porn when we watch the draft and everybody gets drafted. We've got to talk about his dead dog and, you know, your mom was on drugs. Like, what? Do, I mean, that's just par for the course. When it comes yeah. to what we want from our athletes, yeah. we want them to have some suffering background to 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 you know these gladiator style things, and uh, it is unnecessary. The game should be able to speak for themselves. Yep. Anything else to add to that? I guess not. Uh, let's see what we got. He had fifty-two yards rushing. That was horrible. <laughs> so that's so got to change. So, so maybe they should have saved the story. How, I mean, how many? Now I'm looking at how many touches though. Did he get? 
is he being utilized? Let's stay with Davis. Is he being uh, utilized these first two games? Do you feel exactly. like he could be? He right. runs hard. He runs hard. I personally don't think he's the best running back on this team. But they got him in the portal. They told him this is what's going to be what, and it is what it is. You know, uh, I think he hurt his hand. Michelle said something about it hurting his wrist or something. But he is a hard runner, and yeah. he's got hands. We saw that on the touchdown catch that he hit. I mean, he laid out for that. He He's a great player, and I'm not saying he isn't. But RB1 had 52 yards on 14 carries against EKU. Mm-hmm. How many how many carries with that? How many did you say? 12 or 14. 12, 12. Okay, no, I'm, I'm with you. 12. Um, 12. Yeah, I just, uh, 12 yeah, carries uh, for 52 yards. Yeah. Yeah. For for RB one, anybody else see a no, problem not, issue with yeah. that? <laughs> That's not good. Play calling. I mean, I don't. I'm not trying to. I want to be. Uh, could the play calling be different, better, or different? Uh, I I mean, I'm I'm kind of with Terry on this when it's well, X's always, and O's. But you know, last week we started with a. Last week it was pass, 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 pass. I mean, I kept thinking, we, we get a where's our running game? Because we opened up and it was just nothing but an aerial assault. And I went, well, I thought they always said you had to establish a run game to open up the passing lanes. But apparently we're trying to open up the passing or we're going to establish a passing game to open up the, the running lanes. So my philosophy, and it's, I'm sure, flawed because... Again, like most of everybody else here, I'm not an X's and O's person. But I don't think that we have seen anything remotely like the game plan we're going to see for SEC games. I think you don't expose too much of your playbook if you can get by with it. Mm -hmm. That's fair, too. Okay. Uh, NFL started today. Go, Pat, go. The Go Bengals, the, the Bengals, Cowboys are there. killing the Giants right now. Are they? <laughs> Burrow uh, with that fat new new fat contract. Uh, the uh, the stat lines, his <laughs> oh, yeah. stat line did not match the. He the, shit uh, the bed. That's correct. Forty uh, ers did they? They won. They look impressive today, didn't they, Terry? Yes, sir. Going back to the NFC Championship or better. Everybody here, you all NFL fans. Aaron Rodgers, who? We got Jordan Love. We're getting past the 49ers now. <laughs> I'm just sad that I have to retire. My 49ers have eliminated the Aaron Rodgers and the Packers dance videos that I've got a couple <laughs> of floating around out there. I do I do have a different dance I do when we eliminate the Cowboys in the playoffs. There are two different <laughs> dances, two different sound effects. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, whatever. 26 the Cow- nothing over the Giants 26, right now. Oh, at right. Giants Stadium. The Cowboys yeah. might have the best defense in the NFL. Now, is it, offense is a totally different thing. So, you know. Is uh, Wandell activated? Is he back from? I believe so. Injury? Okay. All right. Anything else with the NFL? It's too early to tell, to be honest with yeah. you. No, just I mean, you know, no, it's just too yeah. early. To, you just you don't yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, Prime Times bodyguard had a shirt that said "F around and find out" on the side, and he meant it. Hey, and you know he. <laughs> I, I love that he has bodyguards on the exactly. sideline and not like a state trooper. He's like, I got it. <laughs> Prime, he's got I'm his happy. coaching staff and he's got his entourage yeah. on the side. Because wasn't Irvin on the sideline, Michael Irvin on their side? For some yeah. reason, yeah. Look, I love it. I love Dion. Uh, he's good for college football, man. Because, because that's what we're missing. He's, he's also a about, players coach, too, man. Well, he's, we've talked about uh, well, we've talked about uh, this before, though, is that you know, the 80s and 90s, all these coaches, you know, Kerry Lewis will tell you they were. Everybody had their own unique personality. Bobby Bowden had a thing going on and Lou Holtz at Notre Dame. But now they're all kind of just corporate. They don't say much. They don't do much. I mean, really, Kirby Smart, two-time defending champion, 
What sound bite do you have in your head for him? Steve Spurrier, those guys are gone, mm -hmm. right? Because they become these kind of CEOs. Give me Dion to kind of jazz things up a little bit. Now, I did, I could hear Spurrier. I was channeling Spurrier last week in the Ball State game, complimenting our, or was it, no, this game, or no, t yesterday's game, complimenting our punter. I did hear that in my head. Our punter had some great, had a good stat line, did he, yesterday? Absolutely. Yeah, there were some tweets that said, are we back to liking great punts? <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, our fan base. I think it's winning. Man. Yeah, wins. Yeah. All right. So what else we got before we hit the uh, final shot and see what else was out there kind of trending? Um, uh I'm gonna show something here. I, I I shared this yesterday with Terry and uh, and Michelle, or excuse me, Terry and Carrie. And Michelle, you don't share anything with me. Had a change. <laughs> I'll slide into your DMs later. So look, check this out, guys. I sent this to um, Terry and Carrie, and Carrie just well, first. I want to play it. Well, no, before I play it, Carrie totally downplayed it. Like the fact that it's this brand of a sport in this country, it couldn't be that good. But I want to, I want you all to see this. They're calling this arguably the greatest catch in baseball history. Did you see that? Did you really see that catch, Carrie? Or you were you just uh and then went, you know, downplayed it, or did you downplay it before you saw it? I like I remember. I was at a at the tailgate. I don't yeah. even know. I had to go back look and at look this. at the text. Look at this. Uh, that's top five greatest ever for sure. Just saying. It's great. I don't know I would give it number one because that's a really short one. That's the only reason I'm short. down crying. That's a really short wall. Short wall. Yeah. Short fence. Okay. That's a great play. All right. Fair. But to have but to have a thought in your head to say, you know what, I'm gonna go up into the crowd to get this yeah. damn ball. That, yeah, that's, I'm that's perfect. Nasty. You, I mean, you gotta be thinking running like exactly. oh, I'm going up. I'm off going the up the wall. Yeah. Like that's nuts. Like, yeah. I'm with you on that, Jake. Yeah, that's that's when I realize Carrie's in another world. I'm just sending too much stuff in a text and she ain't <laughs> just been dealing with me and at the moment. Okay. I mean, you know, I can downplay that that catch, but I also uh had a mild sprain in my ankle last week because I tripped over air. So, you know, <laughs> tripped over air. <laughs> I, I literally, literally, I tripped over yeah. air. I uh, kid you not. And uh, that's that thick air in Frankfurt. <laughs> is it, yeah, I was gonna say it's, it's the capital it's, city. In here. here in Louisville, the human the air is very thick. So I, there's probably feet in the air. Maybe. Well, I don't know, but you know, I, I'm probably not the most. Uh, qualified person to ju uh, judge a catch because like I said I can't walk across the room without injury but I still say the short wall played a part if he had a regular good major league height wall probably wouldn't have made that catch that's all I'm saying should might have been greater could have been greater he had a higher wall to climb up what makes you think he couldn't have yeah he went into the crowd could have, he could have grabbed <laughs> that. And if, I'm, if I was hot dog. five nine and weighed 120 <laughs> pounds, I'd be a supermodel. Dog, I mean, you know, you're you're still super, Michelle. All right, Carrie. Uh, I know not to well. sound baseball clips. 
send do not noted do not send baseball clips to carry on a saturday all right let's do final shots and everybody in the chat thanks for all your comments somebody said what was this i just saw oh terry you had mama b in town right she's still here she's, she's upstairs still, okay mama which is b why here. i'm bourbon free <laughs> <laughs> I made I made one and she said I'm like, well, I guess one it is. Can't fight with mama. But yeah, she's up here. She's having a great time. It's been fantastic good. having her here. Always good. Good stuff. Fam. Um give a shout out to uh Van. Van Hiles V Styles. His uh him cut breaking up. down cut up. Yeah, cut up. Uh him him breaking that shit down. It's so good. I love it. He's, he's a teacher for real. Yeah. Yeah. I would have him on my staff if I was coaching. The way he's yeah. the way he looks at things. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. he's just got that mindset, how it should go, how it went, how it could have been different. I mean, we talk about we don't know X's and O's. You get Van on, he can break down anything. It's I fantastic. The whiteboard is a kind of an X. You that's kind of an X and O that you show for me. If X does that this, that was a flow X... chart. That was a flow chart. It's all about emotions. Never just a flow chart. <laughs> just a flow. <laughs> uh, okay. Final shots. It is, uh, you know, Terry. You're going to give me your final shot. Bourbon free tonight. I know. I've been. I, I even dressed up with my mom in the yeah, house. You look good. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, something your your yeah. mom has said to you. Why do you have all these jerseys? Because he can't wear a basketball jersey because ball is not life. <laughs> yeah, you know, with the with the uh, basketball shorts, I got a lot of those nineteen nine shorts. I got all the nineties, so I'm good to go there. But yeah, she said, "Why are you wearing these basketball shorts?" I said, "You know, ball is life." She said, "You're forty three. Ball is no longer life." So, <laughs> and I would come in from running and everything, and I got my Ben Gay on. She said. You smell older than I am. <laughs> she keeps me humble. I love I love Mama B. She keeps me humble. She's 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 doing fantastic. Love it, love it, love it. Um okay. Uh Terry staying with you. Final shot, sir. Final shot. Uh just the FIBA basketball tournament. America didn't fare well, and where you've been gnashing our teeth is America still the best in basketball. And I'm like, if you can name me five people on that American FIBA roster. I'll give you a hundred bucks. So we did not send our best of our best. So I'm not too worried about the rest of the world catching up, but Hey, Shay Gilders Alexander. Okay. That he's dude a, he's a, is becoming, he's, is becoming a, a, a dude. So yeah. I'll, I'll be interested to see what he does next year. Congrats to Germany winning, but no, America still, when we send our best, we're still the best. So mm -hmm. there, there's my two cents on that. And, SGA, um, he just seems very humble about it too. There's no I love that kid. Yes. I mean, he was the kid, you know, he remember he didn't start until no, you know almost the middle of that year. And then he kind of became the leader. And you know, so I love to see him doing well. That's fair. Shout yeah. out to Canada. Yes. Um, I can Anthony Edwards. I knew he was on there. I don't know. I actually don't know who else, but it's isn't it really a a, a matter of just the big play or the main you know the greats. We, we haven't. We have Not one. I do think it. we've only like won one of the last six or seven tournaments. These FIBA tournaments, they fly under the radar. We spit all our eggs in the Olympic basket, so I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I mean, but it's the Olympics, we send Kevin Durant, and he balls out. So it's like, yeah. yeah. But it, it, wouldn't that be just we send our top ten players to every the same top ten players to every tournament. Well, I mean, they, mm -hmm. these guys need an off season too. So exactly, that's what. Yeah. Okay. Carrie, um, your Injury first. Risk. That's true. Yeah, your first of uh final sh shots because you're going to piggyback with my. Go ahead. So Michelle mentioned this. Um, you know, legendary football coach Roy Kidd. Unfortunately, um, probably not going to be on this earth much longer. It's going to be a real shame to to lose him. Um, you know, two-time national championship winner, uh, you know, from Corbin, played State at EKU, legend. State Mr. Legend. EKU, you know, just Kentucky coaching legend, numerous accolades, more than, than you know, you can even count, um, had tons of players come to that program, 
you know, produced NFL players, produced, like I said, national championships. Um, he's definitely going to be missed on that campus for sure. Nicest guy you would ever meet. Um, he actually kind of became a an, an ambassador, you know, after he retired from football and he had an office on our floor. And I actually have his old office. I actually have his old desk. Um, but whenever really? he was on the floor, oh, wow. hey, coach, how's it going? He'd stop and talk to you. So definitely will be missed. Good stuff there, Kerry. Um, Jay, what you got for me? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, well, you guys know I'm a goofball. I love silly shit all the time. So on game day, Saturday, uh, picking teams, Alabama and Texas, Desmond Howard, picks Texas and pulls out the Texas folding chair for the Alabama game, and I thought that was the greatest shit ever. I said, finally. Uh, and I don't think a lot of people got it until it kind of circulated. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was great. That was a great move. Uh, I'm, I'm all for the silly shit. So that, that was wonderful. Um, before I get to you, Michelle, uh, Terry, you had said this to me before, and I actually didn't know. What Do we know what's going on with Coach Cohen? Just a, a medical situation. Mm -hmm. I sent it to you because it, I, I know how you get sometimes, and I didn't want you talking about a man while he's in the hospital recuperating. I don't think I've ever went at somebody. I, I, I would feel bad talking about a man on his hospital bed. <laughs> and I didn't want you to do that. Okay. So pray, prayers to him, you know, seriously. You know, there's there's things more important than more points or fewer points in a sports ball game. So, um, yeah, yeah. Prayer, prayers to, to, to Liam Cohen and, and his family. Michelle, what you got for me? Final and they did here. say he is expected uh, – Cohen is expected to be released from the hospital tomorrow. So whatever Good. his situation was, it appears to be under control, and that's a great thing. I'm going to, like, you know, just strip the gears off this thing and take my – Final shot away from football entirely and give a tremendous shout out to Coco Golf because she, well, last time she lost her first set, but she came back in the second and third and just destroyed her opponent. And, and this is just the, the girl, she. It's just a breath of fresh air, and everybody's like, what are we going to do with U.S. tennis to take that torch and run with it? And that's her first major, and she's 19 years old. So, yay, Coco, you go, go. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. My final shot. Give me a couple of minutes because this one um, this one is uh, a non-sport. This one is near and dear to me and Carrie. Maybe somebody, maybe others on the panel or in the chat. Uh, 30 years ago, today, arguably, well, I'll, I'll speak, my all-time favorite TV show um, aired. It was a Friday night, 9 p.m. 30 years ago, Friday night, I was at home watching this because the build-up to it, everything about it was like, right up my twisted alley, uh, my paranormal alley. Um, and I can only do it justice. Let me see. Where's it at? Here this. 30 years ago today, X-Files made its uh, debut. And if you're into the paranormal, UFOs, aliens, which mainstream media is big time right now when it comes to uh, the whole UAP UFO thing, um, Carrie, we might find out there there is a really a cigarette smoking man who's been doing, you know, the whole uh, covering up thing, conspiracy thing. What say you? Yeah, I mean, they just found some weirdo gold spear at the bottom of the ocean that they're saying they don't know where the hell it came from. So, yeah, um, why not? Mulder and Sally. well, and you know, you know how I feel about the the ocean thing too. So I've had that discussion. 
the ocean is in what the um, as in yeah i'm not the, gonna wait listen to kevin's paranormal shows if you want to hear my take on that no i mean it's the ocean is three quarters of the planet yep and how much of the that how much of it hasn't even been you yep. know looked at there's yep. shit down there of course there is so yeah me and carrie have our uh our thing when it comes to the X Files. Thirty years ago today, Carrie. Very got, exciting. Yeah, we'll be talking because we got to give do some shows to you know pay homage to our to our favorite show. All right, guys, uh, round of shots uh, on this Sunday night. Michelle, glad to have you back. Good to see you. We'll do it again. We're moving forward, not looking backwards. Just like just like Texas, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we will see. Uh Terry, what you got cats talk uh Wednesday? Anything lined up? Good. I don't know, no man. I just show up. You just show up. I just, <laughs> I just show up and do my thing. I'm really bad, but I'm sure we'll have some fun. It's always you always fun. do. Vinny, yeah. good dude. Jay, what you got lined up this week? Uh, got an episode coming out in the morning, covering the game. Had fun with it. A lot of sound bites. Had had some fun with it. Uh, it's it's entertaining. But you know there was some complaining. But at the end of the day, like everyone has said, a win is a win. A W is a W, and mm-hmm. uh, that's what we should focus on more. Is you know we're two and zero. Oh. So that's a good thing. Better than the alternative. Yes. Carrie, you got a, what number you got coming out this week? 388. You are closing in on the 400. Wow. Yep. I'm Monday. She's Tuesday. Terry's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. There you go. Got you covered. That's right, baby. All right, guys. Uh, Everyone in the chat, thanks for hanging with us tonight. Um, Appreciate it on this Sunday night. Terry Carey and her news, Jay Hayes, Michelle Brown. Kevin Hale, wishing everyone a great Sunday evening and work week, or not work week. Um, we'll do it again next Sunday. Maybe the same foursome? Maybe. Michelle, look, look, look for that memo. All right. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. Go Cats. Peace Go out. Go Cats. Go Crows.